Thank you, Jack. Good morning, and happy Sabbath. I am a proud father today. I have two of my children here, and a half of one. I can't take the credit for it all. And a lot of grandkids. So I am very proud, and I want you all to listen to this message. And I want to welcome the people online. My mother should be watching, and my sisters should be watching also. Now, real quick, i got to explain something. Last night, I, I, this is Jack's uh, part of his uh, shot, and I liked it, and I stole it from him. <laughs> but... Hmm. I just wanted to explain the real truth. Now, Jack and the pastor had messed it all up, and I was just trying to fix it in that other one. <laughs> Not really. I'll, I'll, I'll tell the truth. Um, I had the bright idea that we should not use the equipment that come with this thing. And the pastor is saying, yes, we need it, we need it, we need it. Well, I said, we need to call. So Jack called, and what did they say? Did you hook the equipment up? I said, we'll call you back. So we did get it working late last night. Um, I had been preparing this sermon. Could you kill all them lights? I think they're right there because I really want you to see the screen. Um, I've been preparing this probably... I don't remember when the last time um, I did the second one. You can go to the back. Kill all of them, Jack. Yeah, kill them all. That way y'all can see the screen a whole lot better. Um, I've been preparing it since then on and off. And I think it's been about two, two to three months ago. Um, and I just about had it done. And two weeks ago, somebody sent me something. Now, I didn't pay much attention to it. And I was driving down the road, and I thought, well, I'm going to listen to this while I got time. So I plugged it in, and I listened to it. And different things are going on in my mind. And I, something caught my attention, and I had to pull over and listen to it. And then I went back home, and I, I listened to the whole thing. And I was really blown away by the things that was being said. So I kind of jumped online and kind of trying to verify some of this stuff. And then last Sunday, now granted, I was almost done with this, okay? Last Sunday, my friend Richard, you've seen him. He's come over here before and done special music a long time ago. He sent me something. He said, hey, have you seen this? And I looked at it, and I'm like, "Uh, yeah, I've seen it. I sent it back. A couple hours later, he sends me a, um, a message. He says, hey, did you read that? I said, no, but I will later. He said, okay. Now, I did not read that until the next day. So that would have been Monday. But when I read that, I was floored. And I mean floored. And I went back and I changed half of this service. And I am on 18 if you need to turn me down if that's the problem. So I went back and I changed half of this. Now, I'm not going to tell you what time it is. I'll ask you in the end. But we're going to see some things, and we've already, some of you have already seen these, but some of you have not seen them, and I want everybody to see them. So just bear with me a minute. The first thing we're going to see is 57 years ago. This man said some things. Just close your eyes and listen. There's nothing on the screen to see. Just close your eyes and listen and put that to today. 57 years ago. If I were the devil, if I were the devil, if I were the prince of darkness, I'd want to engulf the whole world in darkness. 
and I'd have a third of its real estate and four-fifths of its population, but I wouldn't be happy until I had seized the ripest apple on the tree, the. So I'd set about however necessary to take over the United States. I'd subvert the churches first. I'd begin with a campaign of whispers. With the wisdom of a serpent, I would whisper to you as I whispered to Eve, do as you please. To the young, I would whisper that the Bible is a myth. I would convince them that man created God instead of the other way around. I would confide that what's bad is good and what's good is square. And the old, I would teach to pray after me, our Father, which art in Washington. And then I'd get organized. I'd educate authors in how to make lurid literature exciting so that anything else would appear dull and uninteresting. I'd threaten TV with dirtier movies and vice versa. I'd peddle narcotics to whom I could. I'd sell alcohol to ladies and gentlemen of distinction. I'd tranquilize the rest with pills. If I were the devil, I'd soon have families at war with themselves, churches at war with themselves, and nations at war with themselves until each in its turn was consumed. And with promises of higher ratings, I'd have mesmerizing media fanning the flames. If I were the devil, I would encourage schools to refine young intellects, but neglect to discipline emotions, just let those run wild. Until before you knew it, you'd have to have drug-sniffing dogs and metal detectors at every schoolhouse door. Within a decade, I'd have prisons overflowing. I'd have judges promoting pornography. Soon I could evict God from the courthouse, then from the schoolhouse, and then from the houses of Congress. And in his own churches, I would substitute psychology for religion and deify science. I would lure priests and pastors into misusing boys and girls and church money. If I were the devil, I'd make the symbol of Easter an egg and the symbol of Christmas a bottle. If I were the devil, I'd take from those who have and give to those who want it until I had killed the incentive of the ambitious. And what'll you bet? I couldn't get whole states to promote gambling as the way to get rich. I would caution against extremes in hard work, in patriotism, in moral conduct. I would convince the young that marriage is old-fashioned, that swinging is more fun, that what you see on TV is the way to be. And thus I could undress you in public, and I could lure you into bed with diseases for which there is no cure. In other words, if I were the devil, I'd just keep right on doing what he's doing. Paul Harvey, good day. Hmm. Wow. Is that today? This was 60 years ago that he said these things, and that is so incredible because all these things are going on. Real quick, we're going to go through. I want to I wanna look at the other sermons that we went through, so I want to go through them real quick. Apparently a strange looking statue has recently been installed at the Visitors Plaza at the UN headquarters in New York. The United Nations has a new symbol of peace and security. The UN just put up a giant statue in New York that resembles a beast described in the book of Revelation. What does the UN statue represent? The UN just put up this statue in New York outside of the UN headquarters with the slogan, a guardian for international peace and security. Now the beast which I saw was like a leopard. His feet were like the feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him power, his throne and great authority. It's happening. Signs of the last days prophecies are happening just as Bible prophecy foretold. The artists who create it say it was a fusion of two animals, a jaguar and an eagle. And they say it was inspired by the pagan Aztec culture of Mexico. Now this thing caused such a commotion, and I didn't even hear about it. It caused, caused such a commotion, they have removed it and it is now gone. Time now for your breaking news. The exodus of China manufacturing, shutting down the world's factory. Remember this. The West, Western companies should leave China. Here is a picture of the world. Superpowers are in blue. Where is this? 
Where? Russia. What is going on in Russia right now? Anybody? War. That is right. What about this place? What? China and India. That's right. I did not realize India was a superpower, but they are. What's going on in China? Apple to move iPad production out of China for the first time. This is a big deal. Maybe it'll come into play a little later. What about here? What is it? United States. Why is the U.S. dollar, or why the U.S. dollar is the global currency? I didn't know this. Um, I had to look these things up. Now, there's a lot of places that say it's not, but this is, this is a big deal in what's going on around the world. The world in 2025, China loses power. Why will they lose power? I believe everybody is going to move out of China and shut them down. Now, this is probably a plan. Russia won't even exist. Why do you say that? Or why do I say that? They're fighting a war that they just can't seem to win. Biden announces new digital currency that will completely replace paper U.S. dollars. This is a big, big, big deal. To me, you cannot have the mark of the beast or be forced to do something without removing the ability to buy something. I'm well, sure they can take and cut off your credit card, but what if I got a stack of cash in the safe that's got a million dollars in it? How do you take that away? You really can't because they don't know I have it. But if you replace that dollar with a digital currency, and if you look this article up, we don't have time to read the whole article. We've got a lot of stuff to go over. If you'll go look this article up, this started in about April and it's supposed to be implemented before the end of this year. Now, will it? I don't know. But it is to monitor what you do with your money. You will not be able to have cash no more, and it'll have to run through their system. It will not be blockchain technology like Bitcoin because they are very hard to track. They want to know where it goes. The U.S. dollar, why do you, what makes it valuable? I meant to bring one, but I don't have one. What makes it valuable? The government says so. Well, they could say a lot of things, but what, what, what makes it valuable? Why, why is it valuable? Huh? We want it. Everybody wants it, right? If you didn't want it, would it be valuable? It would be worthless. But everybody wants it, and they are going to remove it. Pope Francis calls for new world order after the pandemic. Now, we could have went down this route, but I don't have time. Um, let's look at this one. Joe Biden causes a stir on Monday during a gathering of business leaders at the White House when he alluded to a coming new world order in the weeks of the Ukraine, Ukraine crisis, apparently not stopping to, to consider the awkward legacy of his phrase addressing the business roundtable CEO's quarterly meeting 
which included the boss of General Motors, Apple, and Amazon. And he brings up New World Order. What is the New World Order? And why has Joe Biden caused an uproar by using that phrase? Sabbath rest. Why and how Christians should embrace a literal day of rest each week? Keep the Sunday as a day of rest to help heal the earth from climate change. Jesuit University theologians call for Sabbath rest to combat climate change. The Pope says it's okay to be gay. You are born this way. Pope Francis has reportedly told a gay man that God made you that way and loves you as you are. Sunday, a day of rest. Nancy Pelosi's husband, Paul Pelosi, attacked. That was yesterday. The Pope connects Sunday. The Pope says Earth needs a Sabbath. Pope, everything is going so fast. They're happening so fast. The headlines, you just cannot keep up. How to argue God does not exist. God does not exist. Scientific arguments. According to scientists, God does not exist. Websites built teaching you how to argue that God is not real. Where can we find God? You have to look for him, right? He might not be visible. However, we can see God in his creation. This is the next in the series of God, Are You Real? Is it okay to ask God, God, are you real? human body is made up of 100,000 billion cells. Included in the figures are the DNA strands which number 125 billion miles. Introducing you the flagellum motor. The flagellum motor is a propeller-driven engine that propels sperm, bacteria, and other substances through the cell. Eight million of these motors could fit side by side across the sec- a cross section of a human hair. It is constructed of 30 moving parts and rotates from 20,000 to 100,000 revolutions per minute. This is the bacteria. These these propellers on the back are the actual flagellum motor. You have 30 different parts. You have a hook and then you have the filament propeller. This is the basal body. This is inside the bacteria have a rod and rings. You have different layers. You 
have a stator. You have a rotor. You have protons. You have a high concentration and a low concentration. You have proton flow. You have moat A and moat B of the stators. And this is what they believe takes place. You have moat A and moat B inside the stator. You have aspartic acids in the center. Protons will enter the center. This causes a power stroke. The protons are then released, which causes a second power stroke, turning the rotor. different layers this is absolutely incredible these proteins will build this motor in 20 minutes Proteins will then come up through the center and start constructing a cap on the rod. The stators will attach themselves to the membrane of the bacteria. The rod will then push itself through the bacteria and when it does it will construct a ring on the outside of the bacteria the cap will fly off a hook cap will be formed and the hook proteins will then build the hook this cap will then come apart other proteins will build a junction in the hook then proteins will start coming up through building another cap which will build the propeller and propel this bacteria so it can go find its food. Twenty to 30,000 of these filaments will be on this tail. And you will seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart. Jeremiah 29, 13. Here is the actual picture of one of these flagellum motors. You can look down through the top in D at the bottom. And you can see your stators. You can look over there at C. You can see your rings. And up here you can see the inside body. Now this is magnified a bunch. I don't think you can see it under a normal microscope. But if we compare it to an electric motor, you have on the back, you have a rotor. Then you have a stator. And then you have the body which bolts down to something. Now, who came up with the first motor? This is the most incredible thing I've ever seen. So if you can't find God, that means you're not looking. How many people in here was raised Adventist? 
How many come into the Adventist church afterwards? Well, I'm going to apologize to my kids because I did not raise them Adventists, and I am sorry for that. But the ones that was being raised Adventists when you was kids, y'all in the back, y'all, y'all remember going through all that. I used to hate it. I wanted to go out on Friday night. I wanted to go to the ball game. I wanted to go do the things that other people did. But I used to hear all these things. America, the Pope, what's going to happen? I could hear the thunder, but I couldn't see no storm. storm coming. Now, for the ones that are not Adventist, basically the Adventists believe that the United States of America will rise to a power and they will then give power to the second beast, which is the papacy. Can we see this coming? We'll find out. Now we're going to review. Let's review. Does anybody remember what that was? Yeah. What is it? Well, they're candlesticks. They're candlesticks, that's right. What are the lines? Trends. What? Trends. Trends. Indicators. They're indicators. Does the Bible give an indication of when Jesus will return? Let's look. Now, as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples come to him privately saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of age? And Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and will deceive you. Many. There's two indicators there. People will come in my name, and the second one, they will deceive many. In our first sermon, we looked at the 18th century. How many do we have? We had two people that claimed to be Jesus. Whoa. Now I feel like Jack. <laughs> We have, two, we have two people in the 18th century claiming to be Jesus. In the 19th century, how many, does anybody remember? We had six. In the 20th century, any guesses? Man, there's page after page. More than just a few, wasn't it? There was 26 in the 20th century. So since we've been tracking it, we had two in the 18th, six, and then we jumped to 26. It's increasing. 21st century, where we are right now, we've only had six, but we're not even a quarter of the way through it yet. However, this one is pretty impressive. Because people actually claim to be Jesus. My name's Alan John Miller, but, but I'm, I'm actually Jesus. I'm Jesus. Deal with it, he says. Man claiming to be Jesus. And we looked through this and we found there were several people and we went through this. But when we looked, we could see that people are claiming to be Jesus. What was the other big thing? Does anybody remember the guy at the bottom? Apollo. Does anybody remember him? Some of these other people, we give them 30 and 40,000 followers. Now, that's a lot. The Bible says many will come in my name, and it says many will be deceived. Apollo, this information is a couple years old, and I started this almost a year ago when I was digging it up had six million followers. 
The Bible says many will come in my name and they will deceive many. Two indicators right off the bat. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars and see that you are not troubled. For all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Just two hours ago, Allied Air Forces began an attack on military targets in Iraq and Kuwait. At this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people. I remember these things. These are conflicts in my time. They're even talking about a war with China. This time, war could be a little bit different. It's not like it was last time. We have enormous power. I wasn't around in the 60s to, when they had the embargo to Cuba. I don't remember the things that was said, but now they're actually threatening nuclear weapons. And when I'd done this originally, I don't think they had even made a threat like that. We looked at the cause or the the things that war causes, the destruction, the loss of life, the starvation, the mass murder, the injury, the sexual violence, malnutrition, disabilities, illnesses, PTSD, anxiety, depression, global economic collapse. Will it ever end? It all started in heaven. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, the topaz, the diamond, barrel, onyx, and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of the fiery stone. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. Ezekiel 28, 14, and 15. How you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into the heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest side of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. And there was war in heaven and war broke out in heaven Michael and his angels fought with the dragon and the dragon and his angels fought but they did not prevail nor was a place found for them in the heavens any longer so we've heard of war all our lives The rising threat of nuclear war. That's kind of a new one. It is for me. Some of you all might remember in the 60s. But that's a new one for me. What is the difference this time? Does anybody remember? 
There is no difference. War has always been here, and it will always continue. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of what? Peace. The only way to get rid of war is for Jesus to come back. And this is where we start today. So we've got people impersonating Jesus. We've got lots of people following him. And we've got war going on. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in various places. What is the meaning of pestilence in the Bible? Pestilence is a deadly disease, usually a disease that affects the entire community. COVID-19 is a disease. Usually a disease that affects the entire community. COVID-19 pandemic causes between 14.7 and 24.9 million deaths around the world. What is the pestilence? Does COVID-19 fit that? Absolutely. The cost of COVID-19 in the United States. The IMF sees the cost of COVID pandemic rising beyond $12.5 trillion. We hear trillion dollars. It's no big deal to us. It's a number beyond our comprehension. Let's look at that. If you took $100 per day and put it in the bank, it would take you 10 billion days to come up with a trillion dollars, 365,296 lifetimes. Or you could recruit every taxpayer in the United States of America, and it would still take you 70 days to come up with that number. A trillion dollars is an enormous amount of money. I took this screenshot last night when, we first, when I first started studying this. The United States was in debt $30 trillion. Less than a year, we are $31 and a quarter trillion dollars in debt. That is an enormous amount of money. If you go to the website and you click the links, it will get you the projected in 2026. And we are projected to be $46 trillion in debt. However, the government don't need money. One of the guys that works for me, he said, oh, the government needs your money. What do they need your money for? They got a printer. They can print their own. And they've been doing this. The U.S. economy is going to collapse, top investors say. Listen to this gentleman. He is not a man that believes in God. He is a school teacher. I'm not going to show his face. I'm not promoting him in any way. However, he says some very interesting things. The news is only bad. Bonds are crashing everywhere. It's been almost a week since Japan sold a bond of any kind. No one wants to buy them. Uh, U.S. bonds are dumping. Um, Britain has crashed the pound so much that their bonds are worthless. And then they're saying to their pension funds, like, hey, uh, pension funds, you're about to be insolvent. Figure it out. Figure it out with what? Right? Their bonds are worthless. The stock market's worthless. What are they supposed to do? Uh Um, We've sent nine-plus billion dollars to Switzerland in swaps. Uh, to shore up the Swiss Central Bank because they're losing money like crazy. Australian Central Bank is losing money. 
uh, sweet, the Swedish central bank is losing money. The American central bank is losing money. If every single solitary CEO says they're bracing themselves for a recession, the banks say liquidity is running out. Interest rates are going sky high. Inflation is nuts. Nuclear war is on the horizon. Uh, real estate. hit that on the head nobody has traded a 10-year Japanese government bond in three days it actually went four days here is a cute one I had to put this on there the central bank putting out a fire does anybody notice that the firemen they're ready to go the house is ablaze but what are they putting the fire out with? Gas. Gas and fire does not mix. The U.S. and around the world, inflation is high and getting higher. I haven't noticed, have y'all? That's not a big deal. The Fed swapped $9 billion to Swiss National Bank to bail out Credit Suisse. That's interesting. Do y'all remember 2008? Was it Lehman Brothers? My mind went blank. I think it was Lehman Brothers. Was having and struggling. Go, no. Goldman Sachs is still there. I think it was Lehman Brothers. They were struggling. They knew they was in trouble. They had a federal meeting. They invited... Six, I think, of the seven banks, the one that wasn't invited was Lehman Brothers. And what happened? They let it crash. I don't think they could save it. They're trying to save the Swiss National Bank. Has anybody heard of this? It's not in the news much, but it is out there. So the, so the United States of America threw out $9 billion dollars to try and help them out. This was a couple weeks ago. This week, their stock dropped like 20% because there is a fear that they're going to go bankrupt. Now, what's interesting about a Swiss bank? Why is the United States trying to bail that out? Where do you hide money? Y'all had to heard, heard before, I'm going to open a Swiss bank. Lots of people hide money there. The United States can't touch their money. Russia officially threatens nuclear strike on the U.S. Wipe out both coasts with four Saturn II missiles. Is the threat of a nuclear war there? America must lead the new world order, President Biden says. I think what the Federal Reserve said to... Uh Switzerland, the Swiss Central Bank, is ultimately meant for Credit Suisse and probably UBS to keep them afloat. Um, they just don't they just don't have the population or the currency available to prop those banks up. Those banks are bigger than the countries themselves, and there's no way to keep them afloat. So uh, yeah, that, that, that's my guess. My guess is that because the U.S. dollar is the standard currency everywhere. The, the Federal Reserve is going to be bailing out everybody. It's not just going to be U.S. banks this time around. They're going to figure out ways to deal with England, to deal with France, to deal with Germany, to deal with Australia, to deal with Japan, because um, they're, they're the currency everyone has to use. So that's going to be... It's going to further indebt the world to the United States. It's going to further indebt the world to the United States. This man does not know prophecy. He has no clue. And he's telling that America is going to get powerful. People are going to owe them money. Now, the American dollar is probably going to be gone because they are really pushing to get rid of that. However, if they print a lot of money, do they want the American dollar? I looked it up, and a lot of companies that buy each other in their contract says you pay us with the American dollar 
How does the United States of America become the world leader? I think it's with their currency. And, be, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. This is talking about the United States of America. It has two horns, Democrat and Republican. In the Bible, Jesus is the lamb. This is a religious free country right now. Sounds great. Are we great? This is something I heard. I want to pass it along, and this blew my mind. Back in April, according to an account in Foreign Policy magazine, negotiators from the governments of Russia and Ukraine met secretly and, quote, appeared to have tentatively agreed on the outlines of a negotiated interim settlement to end the war. The terms of the deal were simple. Russia would withdraw its troops from Ukraine. Ukraine would promise not to join NATO. So each side would get the thing that it wants most simple and effective, and it might have worked. But the Biden administration adamantly opposed this settlement. Biden's advisors didn't just want the Russians to leave Ukraine. That's what they told us they wanted on television, but no. Biden's advisors wanted a total regime change war against Russia, apparently to avenge the election of Donald Trump, which they believed Putin was responsible for, and they were willing to fight the last Ukrainian to get it. So on April 9th of this year, the White House dispatched its hapless cutout, then British Prime Minister Boris Johnson, to Kiev. According to Ukrainian news media, Johnson communicated two messages to the Zelensky government. Quote, the first is that Putin is a war criminal. He should be pressured, not negotiated with. And the second is that even if Ukraine is ready to sign some agreements on guarantees with Putin, the West is not. In other words, who cares what the Ukrainians want? America and the UK demand total war with Russia, regime change war with Russia. And of course, the Ukrainians caught in the middle had no choice but to concede. So days later, the peace negotiations fell apart. This was virtually unreported at the time, but it was the turning point in the war in Ukraine. This was the moment where the goal changed from restoring Ukraine to what it was before the invasion, and that seems reasonable to everyone in the West, to something very different to a war designed to topple Vladimir Putin, just like we toppled Saddam Hussein, and then hoping for the best afterward. That is clearly insane and dangerous. Hmm. The United States could have stopped the fighting over there, and everybody would have went home. No. No. They don't want that. They want a regime change. Remember, Russia will be gone. China will be gone. How do you get rid of China? Take away their factories. Put them somewhere else. Has anybody ever heard of the Knights of Malta? Anybody? One person. Good. I had never heard of them either. Let's check them out. Who are the Knights of Malta, and what do they want? They are a secret religious order with a long and bloody history and a unique status under international law. But that doesn't mean they run the world. Hmm. If we look at the secret membership of the Knights of Malta... We find Charles Joseph Bonaparte. How many, how many of you heard of Charles Bonaparte? Come on, nobody? We got one. I don't feel bad, I hadn't either. Who is he? Charles Joseph Bonaparte. He's just a normal guy. He was born in 1851, and he went to the Harvard Law School. And remember, he's on that list, right? What did he do? He established the Federal Bureau of Investigation. This is pretty good. Let's look look a little deeper. The Pope dissolves the Knights of Malta leadership 
issues new constitution. Can you see the date? September 3, 2022. So they changed it. Who changed it? The Pope. So the Pope is over this organization, the secret religious organization. And the man that started the FBI was one of the Knights of Malta. Do you think that linked anything to the Pope then? Things when they're a, a big news item that's controversial. Like there was a lot of attention on Twitter during the election because of the Hunter Biden laptop story. The New York yeah, we Post. Had yeah, so you guys censored that as well? So we took a different path than Twitter. Um, I mean, basically the background here is the FBI, I think, basically came to us. And some, some folks on our team, it was like, hey, um, just so you know, like you should be on high alert. There was the, we, we thought that there was a lot of Russian propaganda in the 2016 election. We have it on notice that basically there's about to be some kind of dump of, of, um, uh, of, that's similar to that. So just be vigilant. So the FBI comes to Facebook. Who owns Facebook? Mark Zuckerberg. Who really controls Facebook? The Pope, if you piece it all together, the Pope current controls Facebook. Facebook reported users to the FBI. What do I mean by that? All the people that went to the red, that thing on January the 6th, you've all heard about it. The FBI took their Facebook statuses, went through them. Facebook gave them the information and they could see where they was. So getting on there and posting, hey, I'm in Washington, D.C., tearing up the place was not a good idea. The FBI raid on Trump's residence takes the U.S. into uncharted territory, and that is very true. Now, I'm not Democratic, and I'm not Republican here. We're just looking at the facts. Did the FBI raid Hillary Clinton when she broke her servers with a hammer? Why would you break your servers with a hammer? Obviously, you're trying to hide something, right? But they raid Trump. Growing calls for a civil war in far-right groups after FBI search. A second American civil war. Is that possible? I normally don't use Ellen White for anything because a lot of people, especially somebody online, they have no clue who she is, so I don't like to use her, but I'm going to this time. In India, China, Russia, and the cities of America, thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. The moneyed men, the billionaires, because they have the power to control the markets. They purchase at low rates all they can obtain and then sell at greatly increased prices. This means the starvation to the poor classes and will result in a civil war. There will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. FBI search of Trump's Mar-a-Lago reignites conservative call for a civil war in the United States. 
Former Army generals fear civil war in 2024 if election results is not accepted by some parts of the United States military. Open civil war possible if Trump elected in 2024 because the Democrats will see when as illegitimate. Hedge fund billionaire Ray DeLeo warns 2024 election will lead to civil war. When is 2024? That's just a year away. These people don't know prophecy. But they're shooting up red flares everywhere. COVID, conflict, and climate are fueling a global food crisis. Where does a lot of grain come from? Ukraine. They can't get it out. Is a global food food crisis coming. Enough is enough. The Vatican calls for immediate end to fossil fuels. Bold action from world leaders ahead of COP 27. I don't know what COP 26 was until I seen this. Let's look at it. Egypt is hosting COP27. Can it become Africa's climate champion for our sins of emission? 10 plus 1 climate commandments. A narrow strip of biblical land from the Red Sea to the Dead Sea is not only the pathway of the Israelites during the Exodus, but it is also a birthplace of our new climate redemption. This November, this is what month? What's, what's in a couple of days? This November, this year, this November, world leaders will gather down the coast from here in Sharm El Sheik, forgive me, I've never heard it, to try to hammer out yet another climate plan for the too distant future that miraculously has already been successfully implemented in the Areva Valley. The region is the first in the world to be solely powered by the sun. What does Egypt have to do with this? You know, in Egypt, back when the Israelites was there, when the Sabbath come, they shut everything down for the Sabbath for 24 hours, right? Did they do that? They didn't, did they? What did they worship? The sun. Here it is. We're back in Egypt and we're powered by the sun. Climate hope may not come from the 27th gathering of the world leaders on the issue, but instead from nearby places of paramount spiritual power. A group of us under the Auspice of the Interfaith Center of Suitable Development of Elijah Interfaith Institute, never heard of them, recently came together at Mount Sinai to envision what message of hope and transformation religion can offer to humanity. We grapple with the challenges of climate justice. One of the ideas was returning to 
the Ten Commandments given at Sinai while not yet set in stone. Now, we're not going to go through their commandments, but we are going to look at one. And what do they say? Keep the Sabbath. Emissions are down 30% over the Sabbath every week in Israel and are almost zeroed out during the Jewish Day of Atonement, the holiest of the year, the holiest of the year, a global weekly non-carbon day of rest could reduce emissions of the world by a seventh. Mm. And can be observed by different faith communities on different days. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to have worshiping the beast out of this, but what could come out of this? We could see some groundwork coming, some foundations getting set. You can look here and you can see that Microsoft, these, these are all the people that are donating and promoting this. Now, COPE 27, if you'll look, is in the top left corner. Y'all see it? Y'all see it good? Let me blow it up. COPE 27 in Egypt, 2022, and the sun. If you're an Adventist, this should be shooting red flares everywhere. I'm not saying this to scare you. I'm saying this to prepare you. COVID conflict and climates are fueling a global food crisis. Let's read the bottom together. Read this with me. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famine pestilence, and earthquakes in various places. Let's go to the top. COVID. Is COVID in this verse? Matthew 27, verse 7. Is COVID in this verse? Pestilence. Conflict. Is conflict in this verse? Is there a food crisis in this verse? All we're missing is the big earthquake. That's the only thing missing from this verse. And there will be, if I said it's going to rain this afternoon, but it's sunny right now, what's going to happen to the weather? What's it going to do? It's going to what? It's going to change? Is that what you said? I don't have my hearing aids in. I'm sorry. I left them back there. It's going to change. And there will be change. If there was a monster earthquake tomorrow, what would these, what, what, what would these people say? What would they blame it on? Now, let's look at that again. It's saying there will be a change, an earthquake. Climate change. Everything is in this verse is going on right now. My friends, my family, used to you could hear the thunder. Now you can see the lightning. You can see these things coming. This is mind-blowing to me. It is right around the corner. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. 
when its branches has already become tender and it put forth leaves, you know that summer is near. It's not a guess. It's not a guess. You know it. It says you know that summer is coming. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the door. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. I think it's here. Jesus talks about a parable. He talks about the wise man. He built his house on the what? He built it on the rock. But the foolish man, he built his on the sand, didn't he? My friends, is your foundation in Jesus. Because if it's not, there's going to be a time of trouble that's going to be hard to get through. I surrender.